Hello everyone, today we are talking about how to identify corresponding sides and angles of similar figures. So to start off with, we have a lot of vocab to cover. The first being, what is a similar figure? So similar figures have the same shape, but a different size. I always tell my students it's kind of like you're zooming in or zooming out on a shape. So if you have a triangle and you zoom in, it's going to get bigger. If you zoom out, it's going to get smaller. But we're keeping it that same exact shape and we're just kind of shrinking it or enlarging it. So when we have similar figures, their corresponding angles, or the angles that go together, are always going to be congruent, which is just a fancy way to say equal. Our corresponding sides of similar figures are going to be proportional. This is what makes them look like the exact same shape um, because you're changing everything at the same um, rate at the time. All right, so we can identify corresponding sides and angles using something called a similarity statement, which we have an example of right here. This right here is a similarity statement, and I would read this as triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. So while we're at it, let's talk about some other symbols and how to read them. So you saw here this little squiggle is called similar. So this is how we would say similar, same shape, different size. When we have that squiggle over an equal sign, this is called congruent. That's where you'd have the same shape and the same size. When we want to write a triangle, we put this little triangle shape in front of it, so I'd read that as triangle XYZ. And then if we talk about a specific side, this would be the side between A and B. So this side right here, we put that little line above it. And when we talk, want to talk about a specific angle, we put this little angle symbol. So this would be angle C, which would be this right over here. All right, let's talk about how we take that similarity statement and talk or find those corresponding sides and angles. So I like to have my students take that similarity statement and then rewrite them where the letters are on top of each other, kind of in this little chart. So I'm going to take that ABC and I'm going to write it on top of XYZ. And we always write it in the exact same order that it's given to us. So that's very important. So this means that angle A is going to correspond to angle X. So I can see that A goes with X. That means angle B is going to correspond with angle Y. Those are both those right angles over here. Angle C is going to correspond with angle Z. And we can see that really clearly in that chart. So let me get my little face out of the way. All right, so exactly what we just said, angle A is going to correspond to angle X. B is going to correspond to angle Y. And angle C is going to correspond to angle Z. Remember that corresponding angles are congruent. So if I know that angle A is 30 degrees, I know X also has to be 30 degrees. Now let's talk about the side lengths. So if I'm talking about the side AB, that's the side between A and B. I'm going to go in that exact same order, so AB is going to go XY. So I'm talking about the exact same corresponding side. And the order does matter. So even though XY is the same side as YX, I have to make sure I'm writing them in that order when we're talking about corresponding sides and angles. So BC is going to correspond with Y, Z. And AC is going to correspond with X, Z. All right, so that's how we take that similarity statement and turn it into our corresponding sides and angles. Last thing is sometimes they don't give you a similarity statement. They just give you a diagram with those two figures in it. And so they want you to write a similarity statement from there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at those markings. So I know that if something has one marking, that is congruent to whatever else has that same one marking. Two is going to correspond with two, three with three, so on and so forth. So I'm going to start by writing this first quadrilateral out. So I'm going to write J, K, L, M. And, like I said, the J has 3. I know that's got to correspond with Q that also has 3. My K has 2, is going to correspond with R that has 2. S has 1, L has 1, and both our M and our T have none, and so I know that those have to correspond together as well. And so if I was going to write this similarity statement out, I would write J, K, L, M is similar to Q, R, S, T. 
And that is how we use similarity statements and we identify similar or corresponding angles and sides of similar figures. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.